Almost a year ago, I took the 6502 microprocessor out of an old scrap 8-bit Acorn BBC Micro and then manually hand-wired it back up. In the process, going through each step and explaining what was happening and how it all worked. Well, that video proved extremely popular with many of you who had never done any kind of microelectronics before, really enjoying the presentation style and what I did. But what I built wasn't really a computer, it was just a live microprocessor. It had no RAM, no ROM, and the output consisted of LEDs linked to the address bus with input data hand-wired using resistors. Many of you commented on how you'd actually like to see more videos on the subject of actually building a real computer out of parts. The problem is that although this is very possible, by the time you add RAM or memory, a ROM to store a base operating system or instruction set, some kind of video controller for screen output, and a way of reading the keyboard, you've suddenly made something that's going to get very complicated and require a lot of parts. And that's expensive, even in 2020. So over the past year, I've been looking at ways of making a really simple and ultra cheap computing system that I believe anyone could build and then program. After many months of trial and error, I finally came up with a solution that I think works. So welcome to Tiny Basic Computers, the beginner's 8-bit build-it-yourself tutorial series from Wi-Fi Sheep. Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. In this introduction video, I'll go through the outline of the project, its aims, its goals, and how it's going to work, and most importantly, what you need to build your own programmable 8-bit system. But for this video, let me set out the project. We're going to build a simple 8-bit programmable standalone computer. I want this project to be as accessible to as many people as possible. So if you don't have any previous experience in electronics or computer engineering, just an interest and desire to build your own computer, then this project is for you. The project has to use easily available all new parts. So no requirements on vintage microprocessors or obscure video chips not manufactured for the past 30 years. It has to be as low cost as possible, with a budget of 20 to 30 pounds. That's around 25 to 40 US dollars at time of recording. It can't use any specialist tools or equipment. This includes soldering irons. I get a lot of feedback from people who feel they can't solder or are nervous using soldering equipment. So for this project, you can build on your own kitchen table in about an hour and the only tools you're going to need are a pair of scissors and they're really for opening the packets that your components come in. And finally, the computer needs to be easily programmable. Now for this, as you might have guessed by the title of the video, we're going to use a version of BASIC called Tiny Basic. Tiny Basic was developed in the mid 1970s as a response to Microsoft's Altair Basic, which cost around $140 at the time. Tiny Basic was open source and free. A supported version of this we'll be using as our primary programming language for the system. Now, I mentioned the amount of components and chips required to build the computer system the traditional way. Well, it turns out the microprocessor, RAM, ROM, clock, and even EEPROM data storage can all be replaced with one modern microcontroller board, such as an Arduino. Now, Arduinos might look suspiciously like Raspberry Pis, but they're in fact a little bit different. On its own, an Arduino is not a standalone computer board, so unlike Pi, you can't run an operating system on it like Linux. Arduinos are used as microcontrollers, and they require another computer to upload code to them. As Arduino is officially open source, there are a number of clone boards which are compatible and also tend to be considerably cheaper. Its two clone Arduino Nanos we'll use for this project. These tiny boards require the CH340 software driver for Windows to allow them to connect to a PC for code to be uploaded. We'll need to use two, one for the main computer and basic interpreter, and the second to act as a text output terminal and video card for displaying on a TV or monitor. 
Now the code required to turn these into a computer system consists of mostly off-the-shelf library files with some custom modifications. These normally need to be compiled and then uploaded. However, I had issues getting the code that would compile or even upload. Plus, most of the code needed additional libraries to be installed and some of these would only work on certain versions of the Arduino IDE environment running on certain builds of Windows or Linux, all making things very complicated. So, to make things easier, I have compiled the source code into what are known as hex files. These are a bit like ROM files and can be uploaded to the Arduino without the need to compile or have working external libraries. As with the CH340 driver, you'll also need a program called Xloader, which is free for Windows 7, 8 and 10. This program allows hex files to be written to the Arduino. All the software, hex files and Tiny Basic Programmer's Reference Guide are available as a download toolkit on our $3 Patreon tier. Visit www.patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep to join today. Alternatively, and in the spirit of the open source nature of Tiny Basic and the Arduino, the first version of the hex files will be made available for free on our new Tiny Basic Computers Facebook group. You can join at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash WFS Tiny Basic. This is a new community space I want to create where you can share project builds, get help and advice from others, and publish your tiny basic source code and program ideas. In the next video, which will be next month, that's October 2020, we'll build the actual computer system. If you intend to follow along, this will give you time to order the necessary components and parts required. Most of these parts can be bought very cheaply off sites like eBay or AliExpress. So let's go through what you're going to need. 1x 840 hole or pin solderless breadboard, 3x 1k resistors, 1x 170 ohm resistor, 1x 104 ceramic capacitor, 1x 4 pin surface mount push button switch, 2x Arduino Nano or clone, preferably with the headers pre-soldered, unless you're happy to solder these yourself. The Arduinos need to come pre-installed with a bootloader, if at all possible, and be for 2K of RAM version with the 8-bit Atmega 328 microprocessor on board. Around 24X male-to-male jumper wires of various lengths and colours, 4X male-to-female jumper wires of the same length but various colours, 4X crocodile or alligator clip leads, 2x RCA female sockets or 1x dual socket. For this demonstration, we'll be using the dual socket unit. 1x PS2 type female connector with 4 pin pre soldered header. This can be substituted for a USB 2 connector, although all keyboards will require a PS2 protocol to be present. 1x male PS2 to female USB adapter. If you don't have a PS2 keyboard, then you'll need to use USB. As mentioned, the USB keyboards will require the PS2 protocol to be present. Most generic PC keyboards I tried worked fine. 1X mains to 5V USB power adapter. Any smartphone power adapter will do, this example here being a UK spec Apple iPhone charger. 1X USB to micro mini or USB-C cable. This will depend on the type of Arduino's nano boards you intend to use. Most nanos use the mini USB standard. 1X RCA male to male phono lead with two or more RCA male plugs on each end. A PC running Windows 7 or later, preferably an older laptop or spare secondary machine and a TV or display with an RCA style composite in video jack. This is an analog TV standard for video, which some newer TVs might not support. However, you can buy composite to VGA or HDMI converter boxes if required. All these parts shouldn't cost too much money, but it will depend on where you are in the world and commodity prices. Now, I feel it really important to manage expectations about this project. The computer system is real and easy to build, 
but the end result have some major, and if I do say so myself, brutal limitations. The computer is the equivalent of a mid-70s machine, so think Altair 8800 or Apple One. It outputs a black and white text only display with 999 bytes of RAM available for program code. That's just under 1K. Saying that, the machine should not be considered useless as it is capable of sound, running simple programs and being used as a base for building additional breakout projects. So I hope this introduction has inspired you to have a go and you'll join me next time when we start the main build. In the meantime, don't miss any future videos from Wi-Fi Sheep by making sure you have subscribed and click the notification bell. Links to the Facebook group and our Patreon can be found in the description to this video. So until next time, thanks for your company and bye for now.